unforgiving North Atlantic. For millennia, men have sought fortunes here. More than 10,000 never returned, including the six fishermen lost in the perfect storm. Still, every fall, a handful of brave crews risk everything Shark! in search of big fish. Don't let it get away! Got him. Here's a thousand dollar bill with fins. And a bigger payday. Money, money, money. Oh. It's an epic gamble where one mistake that one's still fighting. can get you killed. six weeks into an outstanding fall season. That's what I'm going to see right there. But since a vicious storm nearly took out the Eagle Eye too, this truly sucks. The fleet is on high alert. This is a real deal. You make the wrong mistakes, you're going to pay for it. A hundred miles off the coast of New Jersey, is the Francis Ann. Time to go, man. And Captain Slick Clem is anxious. I hope we catch something today. I want to get situated. I hate having to drive around and not find a home. Slick and his crew of young guns are coming off an epic first trip. Best trip I've ever been out on. 24, 6, 27, Bubba. Come on. Great days of work. It's a thousand bucks a day, can't complain. But Slick's young crew did a little too much partying after the last trip. He got screwed out of 45 minutes of sleep. Danny decided it was time to wake up, so he turned the light on, even though we had 45 more minutes of sleep. Now restocked with $30,000 of fuel and provisions, the Francis Ann is back in the hole. And the only way to dig out is to put some fish on the boat. Any reason why you got your sunglasses on and it's still dark out? And it looks like the crew left their A game on shore. Come on, ladies, let's go. We've been off for three days. And no one feels the pressure more than 21-year-old deckhand Lemmy Eastburn. You three foot of water down there, idiot. You're a idiot. Take this. Six hooks and nobody's around. Sodfish! Somebody clear that, man! All right, listen. Two of you's got to do something. One of you's got to do something. We're drifting over it. It's coming out the other side. Slick's crew missed unhooking an empty leader, which is now tangled around the fish and main line. Somebody take this! Somebody take this! What the f man? Pull your heads out of your three days off. Let's go. Why is everybody standing behind me when this the fish is up forward? Anybody else? Go. Yeah! Woo! Come on. Yeah. I'm um, assembling my tally board. Whether I'm going to put anything else on it, that's a different story. Big eye, come on! Get tuned up here. Come on, what a big eye. Thank you. Come on. Come on. It's a money fish. 
Big Eye Tuna can fetch three times more per pound than swordfish. They're the gold standard of longline fishing. That looks like we're right on. We're catching big eyes. That's what we wanted. Swordfish! Yeah! Woo! Come on! But swordfish are still the backbone of a good trip. Yeah! Woo! Coming at you, Danny. Nice swordfish. Woo! Woo! Pick, 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 pick. Slow pick. Nice pop. We'll take it. Nice sword. Nice sword. Woo! <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Come on. Here we Woo! go. Nice job. Right. Hells yeah. That was all. Woo! Come on, baby. Free gap and swordfish. Good job, Glenn. Give me some pounds. Woo! A little relieved. Not out of the woods. A little relieved. The first day back has erased a quarter of the Francis Ann's debt. A few more days like this, and Slick and his crew will be out of the hole and into the money. 1,900 pounds. We had almost 2,000 pounds today. 1,900. Tomorrow's another day. Six hundred miles to the northeast, in the small fishing village of Bay Bulls, Newfoundland, are the Bjorn II and the Eagle Eye II. Ready? Big fish coming up. Up easy. Two days ago, Eagle Eye II Captain Scotty Drabinowitz and his veteran crew ran in early to catch a high market price. We just got the news. The price just went up a dollar and a half a pound. We got it, we're going. But hurricane force winds in the harbor nearly smashed the boat and crew on the jagged Newfoundland coast. We had a, a lot of trouble getting in, but we couldn't get to the dock. The weather was Glad to be at this point. I knew we'd get here someday. I was hoping yesterday, but that just wasn't the day. Too damn rough. Now it's time for the Eagle Eye 2 to cash in on their white knuckle trip to the dock. It's a nice fish. Right. Here we go, don't get under that fish now. Always love to see big fish come out of the hole. Holy smoke. Swordfish are a Grand Banks fisherman's bread and butter. Pretty fish there. Chubby, big thick belly walls. Thick belly walls, you know, these price. Handsome looking specimen. <laughs> But a bluefin tuna is a five-star meal. Oh my god, I've never seen a fish that big, dude. <laughs> Anything that weighs 600 pounds helps out the trip. Yep. A tuna's quality is determined on the dock by a tuna broker. Color, you want a nice cherry red? It turns to brown as it ages or it heats up and burns. So the more cherry, the better, and the more fat content, the better. Oh, oh. 600 and something, I'd say around six, seven bucks a pound, 4,000. Off the top of my head, four or 5,000. Once their quality is established, these prize jewels are packed in their own special case and shipped to market. Tomorrow, they'll be sushi in a fine Manhattan restaurant. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ready? That fish is definitely over 500. Five eighty. That's a big fish. Five eighty three. Can't mow. That's a beauty right there. This monster sword might pay Scotty twice. He has a wager with Linda over who catches the biggest fish. We didn't get the big ones out yet. Quiet. <laughs> that's a pig right there, man. Yep, that's a big fella. I think I'm on 100 bucks. That's what I think. This is getting very expensive. Do you take Canadian? Take Canadian. Take it. Take, take sucre. Take rules. Take it all. Take plastic. Take plastic. Uh, Will you listen? All forms of things. Right. I really thought I had it made this trip. You know, we had some really nice fish, but our biggest one was four, four ninety-two, and I thought, yes, 100 bucks in my pocket. Friggin' Scotty, he's a tough guy to beat. Just won the bet, happy about that, but what we got down here is big money. 45,000, we're happy about that, can't complain, we're thrilled. 
At an average of $3 a pound, the Eagle Eye 2 will gross over $120,000 on this trip alone. I'm happy. I'm real happy. Coming up. How about a bet, you and me? Gambling for dinner on the Francis Ann. If you catch the biggest fish of the day, I'll cook dinner. If I catch a sword bigger than yours, you have to cook dinner. And gambling with their lives on the big eye. Head overboard! Head overboard! Head overboard! A hundred miles off the coast of New Jersey is the Francis Ann. But we're not catching much. After pulling up over 2,000 pounds yesterday... Come on, baby. Free gap and swordfish. Today, Slick is coming up empty. I'm surprised. Thought we were doing a little better today, but still have three sections to go. Anything's possible. To change his luck, Slick gives Lemmy a rare chance to run the haul back. I want to catch Slick some fish. Keep in a good mood. hundred pounds. Any fish over a hundred pounds is called a marker. Two hundred pounds is a double marker, and so on. Let me with the mark. It's the first like big fish I've ever caught besides like a blue dog. I'm pretty proud of him. Nice marker, Bubba. How about a bet, you and me? If you catch the biggest fish of the day, I'll cook dinner. If I catch a sword bigger than yours, you have to cook dinner. All right, I'll take you, Ben. Roger, Roger. Thank you. Swordfish! Is this your entry right here, Ben? Slick's first sword comes up short. My fish is bigger than Slick's. Get out of here with that thing. Hey! Mine's bigger. Oh, ho, ho. Awesome. Just released it. Good release, Dan. We'll catch him next year. He'll be a 60 pounder. With only a few hooks to go, time is running out for the captain. Live swordfish. Look at that, at least lit up. Look how purple he is. Woo! I definitely don't think that's fair to mine. Okay. Got you nervous, though. That one doesn't beat Lemmy's. So, so it, it goes on. <laughs> Starting to sweat the bet, Lem. Small sword, 50 pounder, 40 pounder, something like that. Not as big as mine. Rat! Rat sword! As the last hook comes on board, Slick's looking like a loser. I won the bet. That's a first. That's the first time I have one up. And when we get to the dock, that's probably the first thing I'm going to say to our boss, Rick, is, yo, one day I caught a sword bigger than Slick. I got one up on him. Tonight, the captain cooks. Onion rings, corn, and ribs. Another epic meal on the Francis Ann. But with a good meal, corn, everyone wins. 
I was definitely 30 minutes or less that meal. Rachel Ray LaBelle. A hundred miles north in the fishing town of New Bedford, Massachusetts, the tiny big eye is back at the dock for repairs. How are you doing this morning? I come in because I had some problems with uh, my heat pump. That means that there's no air in the boat, no central air or heat. It makes it where we can't live. I don't want to go fishing unless the boat's at 100%. The repair will take three hours. Chops takes the time that he's stuck waiting to find a replacement for deckhand mullet. I'm going to make a few calls, get a crew member, and if I can, I'll just uh, I'll go shorthand. It's a big fishing village here, basically, so hopefully we'll be able to find a man. New Bedford's a really hard place to find anybody that's not got problems or issues. I need somebody to go. The guy just left me. There's no way I can even get a crew member up here. Being a man down has forced Greenhorn Don to step up. Me and Woody's gonna really take the heat on it if, if we don't find another man. I'm gonna have to be pulling hooks in and uh, putting dobs away and, you know, pulling poly balls and all that stuff. So Chris can really haul gear and he can stack you up quick. Forced in after only one day of fishing. Oh, all right, come on up for these two. The big eyes offload will be small. This is it. Back there, a thousand pounds, a little more maybe. Ain't much. The fish is offloaded. The boat is repaired, but Chomps is still a man down. Been losing time, one problem after the next, so uh, right now I just gotta go fishing. This is Captain's call. If he says we're going three-handed, we're going three-handed. So. I have no choice. It's the way Chompers does it, I guess. I got to go suck it up and deal with it. 600 miles to the north in Bay Bulls, Newfoundland, the Eagle Eye 2 and the Bjorn 2 are still tied to the dock. <laughs> when are you casting? Right now. Yep, we're I'll out of here. Throw your lines. Yeah, we're I'll out of here. I'll call you on 10. We'll be right behind you. With storms brewing in the North Atlantic, Scotty knows it's just a matter of time before the Grand Bank season comes to a close. Good day. See you, Patrick. Good luck. Just pulling off the dock here now. Bound for sea. Linda's itching to join Scotty, but she's been stuck on the dock waiting for more gear. I keep looking at the dock like I'm gonna see a truck come. Drive myself nuts. Man, I hate to see them getting out before us. We've been here for so long. Within hours, the Eagle Eye 2 is in the open ocean. Scotty plots his course to the fishing grounds. Just checking out my orb system here seeing where we're going to be headed to. But on the computer screen, all he sees is a big red roadblock. Yeah, red is waves, and there's plenty of it. They're showing about 11 meter seas in that storm. Brian and Daryl are just going to get suited up. Make a double check on the deck here. Just make sure everything's secure or tied down or taken off the deck. Yeah, it's better to come out now than have to come out again when the weather's twice as bad as this. It's a lot safer this way. That way we don't end up getting washed overboard or injured any kind of way. What he can do now is face this massive storm head on and hope to survive it. 
I mean, nice weather's all over and done with. Fantasy's, fantasy's done. Now reality sets in. Bay Bulls, Newfoundland. After waiting over a week for their gear, the Bjorn 2 is finally heading out for their second trip. All right, Timmy. With more frequent storms and colder water rushing down from the north, Captain Linda Greenlaw's Grand Bank season is rapidly coming to a close. All aboard and going All aboard. Boys. Got all the gear made up. I had plenty of time on the dock to do that. And I'm just getting everything tied back down and getting everything ready. You never know what kind of weather we're going to be running into. I have no idea what we have in store, what's ahead of us here. We're going to go out, we're going to look for some fish, we're going to make some sets. Hopefully, we'll land on something worth working on. We just have to get back on. One hundred miles off the New Jersey coast is the seventy-two foot Francis Ann. That's a nothing. So for a couple good fish, but maybe on the other end, still got a ways to go. Captain Slicks, depending on the thirty miles of line the crew set out last night, each of the thousand baited hooks is a chance to put the boat back in the black. But so far, today's fishing has been thin. We're catching nothing. Except the little runny nose. Nah, we haven't really been catching much. The yellowfin, small yellowfin, small big eye, and a large pup swordfish. Slow day so far. Despite the small haul, the young guns have managed to cover the trip's expenses. Anything they catch from now on will be money in their pockets. This hook is bending my string. There you go. This hook is definitely not empty. There you go. Ah. Ah, you see his mouth? Ah. Probably a $200 fish right there. 100 pound mako, $200. You don't get much for him, but there's something. Swordfish! Come on! Yeah! Woo. Nice swordfish. Albacore tuna. Six fish. Couple sharks. Nothing else to do. And hopefully we can go uphill from there. You know, see what happens tonight. But just as the crew starts making money, Slick gets a call on the satellite phone telling him to bring the boat in. Roger. All right. Hmm. It's going to be crappy weather for four days. We have the option to run towards the dock, and that's what we're going to do. Now he's got to break the bad news to his crew. Well, it's going to be Thursday. Rick wants us to come in, so that's what's going on. You guys probably know we're not going to make any money. Probably got enough fish to cover expenses, so we didn't go forward. We didn't go back, so we're just going to have to take it, take it as it's dealt. A hundred miles off the coast of New Bedford, the little 58-foot big eye struggles against the Atlantic's fury. And once more again, I put the boat into the hole, further into the hole. Chops is trying to salvage a bad week. Between mechanical breakdowns and crew members jumping ship, 
chops can't catch a break. That's the way it goes. That's what happens when you become a fisherman. You get them sometimes, and then sometimes you don't. Last night, he set out in the path of this massive 1,200-mile storm. Now, he's paying for it. into the day. The update is... Catching nothing, getting ass kicked. Swordfish! Broke him up there. Bring it on a boat. But a nice marker brings a little hope. Help. Getting in here. Next up, a tuna. Big eye. It might be smaller than the market, but it's big money once they get it to market. But Chomps' good luck doesn't last for long. That one's not even spooling. Damn. I think the thing's wore out in it. Hold up. Hold up. What the? Is it moving or not? The thing's wore out in it. The leveler that spools the main line has broken down, causing a snag on the drum. Get the tools out, Woody. Chomps' brother Woody has to reverse the drum and let the main line out until he finds the snag. Still got to take some off of there. It's a good little pile on the drum. All right. I think it's just jamming the up. If it's wore out, I can tell you that. It might last today, but. <laughs> we're going to start hauling again. Huh? We're going to see if it does it again. Let the line out. This will all do it right here. Woody manages to get the leveler tracking evenly. Going back and forth in that one little spot for a little while like that. Lock that truck. No, as long as it's still spooling, it'll be all right until we get done home. But it's a temporary repair that could go at any time. Over the next three hours, the storm continues to intensify. And worse, it's chased the fish away. What they are catching are either too small or blue dog sharks. But then, Big eye. there's cash on the line. This big eye has been turned into dinner for the sharks. Oh, in the water. Big eye! The big eye gets one last chance to salvage their day. Losing one of the few money fish of the day finally forces Chomps' hand.
with barely enough in the hole to make a fish sandwich. And of the gear. Chops turns tail and points his battered boat a thousand miles south. The weather's going to be a lot nicer, a lot warmer. Looking for some nice swordfish and some nice tunas, and I will sniff them out. Eight hundred miles north, the Bjorn Two is bobbing mercilessly in turbulent seas. The weather's coming on. You know, we're expecting a storm, and I think this is just the beginning of it. We're going to get a lot of wind. Um, the worst of it's going to be probably this evening. The storm that chased Chomp South is now descending on legendary Captain Linda Greenlaw. It's really my responsibility. To Handle the boat, the bad weather. While Linda struggles to stay on course, down below, her crew does its best to just hang on. Hold on. Wow. Deckhand Dave Hiltz has had a bad attitude the entire season, and this isn't helping. The only one I'm a little nervous about is Dave Hiltz because he's been so miserable all trip. His head hasn't been here, his heart has not been here. Why do you constantly torment us with the prospect of catching fish? And though he promised Linda he was committed to a second trip. I'm in. Yeah, you're in. I'm in. All right. Bad weather has made it impossible to keep his promise. It's too late to see no fish, no weather. What happens in this story anyway? <laughs> they all die. Is that true? <laughs> they all die. Brought that on the boat. Up in the wheelhouse, Linda keeps a firm hand on the controls as the storm lets loose. When the weather gets so bad that you're afraid the autopilot's not going to be able to keep the bow into the wind, then the captain really has to stand and man the wheel. We're going to get pounded. miles southeast of Newfoundland, the Eagle Eye 2 is getting pummeled. 50 to 65 knots here. Probably going to be a pretty bumpy night here tonight. Although Scotty's main concern is survival, Seems like it's just been storm after storm. It's just, it's like a non-stop roller coaster here. $40,000 in the hole. He needs to get his gear in the water. I'm hoping to see it a little calmer by, say, 8 o'clock in the morning. Scotty tries to get a few hours shut-eye during deckhand Tommy Fox's watch. Yeah, go 30-foot waves there now, scatter, go scatter one there, it's 30-footers. Big enough to make it look, I guarantee you that. that never broke until it got on our stern. I don't think you guys are going to stop enough to let us get fishing. in. It keeps coming and coming.
30 miles to the southwest is the Bjorn II. After two nights of relentless storm, we're gonna get pounded. The weather finally clears. It took a little bit of toll, you know. Missing a deck tile, a bait table a little smashed up. That was a hell of a storm. Because up we broke the table, we didn't even fishing yet. Linda and her crew survived, but the storm may have drawn the curtain on the Grand Bank season. Finally, just about daylight this morning, it dropped out enough to knock the boat out of gear, and it's not really good enough to go steaming around looking for water. It's not really what I'd call fishable at the moment. Bobbing around here. Oh, it's getting old. Eagle Eye 2, Bjorn 2, here Scotty, come in. Come on. We've still got, I don't know, I guess 30. Still got 30 knots here out of the northwest over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not flat time. Come on. The fish have left. You can't catch them if they're not there. With the fish heading toward shore, instead of throwing in her lines, Linda throws in the towel. We're heading to Georgia. You're going to try it or are you going to come along or? Yeah, I haven't made my mind up yet. I gotta scratch my head about it here. Come on. Let me know what you decide, or stand about it. I know it hurts you guys' feelings to be leaving the Grand Banks. Maybe we'd have better weather on George's anyway. I could walk home from there. I've made the decision to get out of here. And I'm optimistic that we'll find some fish on George's, put some fish on the boat. I keep saying we're gonna put some fish on the boat. There's still hope. After a massive storm ripped through the Grand Banks, the troubled Big Eye has run south, where Chomps hopes to change his luck. The Bjorn is holding steady, but is yet to throw any lines on this trip. The Francis Ann has to head to port with only a couple thousand pounds in the hole. The Eagle Eye 2 has caught over 43,000 pounds of fish, but their second trip has so far yielded nothing. Looking at how much the ocean has changed here today, the water is uh, almost 10 degrees colder than it was. Now Scotty has to make the crucial decision to hang around or run. Everybody kind of drove by this spot. They just don't want to stop and try it. I was very tempted to just keep going, but, you know, basically I'm a Grand Banks fisherman and uh, we're not leaving until I'm satisfied there's nothing here. While Scotty goes over his options, the crew clears the deck. Can you hear me? I don't know if we're going to fish here or not. Nobody knows. Scotty's got to try to figure out the best move for everyone. we got to come up with a course of action. Yeah, the best move to make us money to keep us safe. This time of year out here, this fire road, 400 mile off, get pretty nasty. Help is a long ways away. Baits in the baskets, ready to go. Can't even get fishing. No fish. Zero. Big fat zero zero. Up in the wheelhouse, Scotty finds a piece of water that looks promising. We're hoping we can still find one last hurrah out here. I know the guys are all sick and tired of riding these storms out for, you know, basically nothing. I guess this is the last little bit of warm water right here on the Grand Banks. We're gonna try to finish it out right here. Hopefully the cap made a good decision and catch some fish. Fishing's a lot like gambling. You gather information, calculate the odds, and place your bets. 
Okay, throw it. Keeper! Yes, sir, boy, we're fishing on the western side of the Grand Banks there now. This is our first set. Let's see if there's any big ones left on the Grand Banks. Yeah, time to fish, time to get that money. You know what I'm saying? Yep, tomorrow morning, pull all our gear back and uh, see if there's any fish going around. We can catch fish, we might not catch fish, we might catch sharks and fish, we might catch no fish and sharks, we might catch all sharks, we might catch all fish, we might get our gear cut up in a million pieces with sharks on it. The possibilities are endless. Over a thousand miles south off the coast of Georgia is the Big Eye. While the Grand Banks got pounded, Chomps ran south to his home fishing grounds. We got our ass beat. Instead of dealing with rough weather and cold water, we'll deal with hot water and no wind. With no fish coming up on deck for over a week, Chomps' crew is eager to fill the hole. I'm definitely ready to get fishing. Sure. It's been a while since we've been fishing. Hopefully get out here and hit the right spot. Go and get it taken care of. Go back home. I told him to make sure the boat was set up this evening when I went to bed yesterday. Make sure the boat was set up in case I decide to fish. One thing's for sure, when Chomps' gut tells him to fish, that's when they'll fish. The ocean's big, it could be full of fish, could not be full enough. So I'm gonna fish while I can catch what I can, and try to put something on the boat. And tonight, he's feeling it. Finally fished. Real happy to be sitting out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we're sitting in the right spot, load the boat. Seems like the wind's coming straight across there. I want to foul anything up. Still a man down, Greenhorn Don is forced to work the rail. The dangerous job of tying on dobs and setting out the beepers. Beeper! Is that buoy in the water? Oh, no. It's the longest four dobs I've ever seen. Beeper! Hold up! On swords. Well, Chamber, for better or for worse, I'm gonna run the boat next trip. Business first. One captain's demoted. Clean it up, clean it up. They're, they're tight. While another is brought to his knees. Watch out! Well, that's gonna break. And one lives his worst nightmare. Man overboard! Stop the drop! 